and welcome to Ask Laura TV. It's good to see you again after some couple of days, just some couple of days. I'm so excited that today it's, um, it's a beautiful weather out there and um, so I decided to have this, you know, look, sit on the floor, be natural. I just like keeping it simple. So today, uh, the words that I want to share with you is to encourage somebody out there. Um, we all need a little bit of, you know, pat on the shoulder. We need a little bit of encouragement here and there once in a while so i pray the lord that you will be encouraged at the end of today i did some research and that's what i want to share with you i love doing research um today we're going to be talking about stars we're going to be talking about water and hair strange topics you would say yes they are let me read out some things that i found out according to the natural site all right no one knows how many stars exist but the number would be staggering. Our universe likely contains more than 100 billion galaxies. And each galaxy actually have more than 100 billion stars. Let me bring out the points here. In this planet, in this world, there are more than 100 billion galaxies and each one of these 100 billion galaxies actually contains more than 100 billion stars. Can you just imagine? And that's why nobody knows the number of stars that we have. I understand that some are visible and some are not visible. Um, and let me show you something. I'm going to relate nature with, to the Bible. I'm going to relate nature. I've done my desktop research, all right? So I'm bringing what Niger site says and I'm bringing it to the Bible. As much as scientists are not able to determine how many number of stars you have out there, Listen to what Psalm 147 verse 5 verse 4 says, God determines the number of stars and calls them by name. God knows the number of stars that are out there and God has called each one. Each star actually has a name. I wonder what each name is. Um, so that's what stars. Hold it. Let me tell you something about water. It's interesting to note that the surface of this planet is approximately 71% water. And that's why it is called blue water, all right? So imagine, I also understand that our human body is made up of 70% of water, something like that, and, but then this earth also um, is made up of 71% of water. And also, according to the US Geological Survey, there are over 332 billion cubic miles of water on the planet. Of the world's total water supply of about 332 million, sorry, not billion, cubic miles of water, about 97 are contained in the ocean. You would remember your school days, you would hear Atlantic Ocean, you'd hear Indian Ocean, Pacific Ocean, you'd hear about Southern, and then you'd hear about the Arctic. Why am I talking about stars and water? Again, let's go back to what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 12. God says that God has measured the water is in the hollow of his hand. Okay, so let me bring it home. When you scoop your palm or your hand into a bathtub, right? What do you bring out? Probably like a teaspoon of water. And that's what can be contained in your hand. Now imagine God. All the water that I've talked about contained in all these oceans. About 332 million cubic um, miles of water. The Bible says they are contained in the hand of God. Can you just imagine, you know, what God looks like? Can you just imagine what the hand of God looks like if God could place the entire Pacific Ocean in his hand, the Indian Ocean in his hand? If God could number and call each stars by name, can you imagine that that is the God that is saying that he stands by the door and he's knocking because he wants to come and wine and dine with you? Can you imagine that that is the God that is saying that he loves you? Can you imagine that the mighty God who says that he cares about the sparrow, now the sparrow is a bird. Do you have a pet? I love dogs, we grew up having dogs, right? But imagine if you had a dog, you would probably care about your dog. Imagine God who could actually, who not could, who contains the entire world, the entire ocean in his hand caring about sparrow, a little bird, that is God. Now let me bring it further home. 
I'm bringing it to you. This is why I'm going to talk about your hair. Do you know every time you comb your hair out and a strand falls up, God looks down at you and says, Oh, he's growing bald. Matthew chapter 10 verse 30 says that every number of hair on your head is numbered. Let me take that again. Every strand of hair that you have on your head, God knows the number. So every time that you're busy combing out your hair and some are falling off due to over perm, do whatever it is, God knows. When you're going bald, God actually knows so you don't really have to feel bad. <laughs> does God care that much? Oh yes, he does. Jesus cares. God created us because he cares. And that's just what he's saying. Jesus was teaching that God is aware of everything that happens even to sparrows and that you are more valuable to him than to sparrow because he didn't make the sparrow or animals in his image and likeness. He made you. He made me in his image and likeness. And this, this, this is why you are much more precious to God. You're so precious to God that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, you know, to come to earth, you know, to save you from whatever it is that um, you may be going through. Were you raped? Did you lose a loved one? Are you abandoned? Are you afraid? What are you going through? Are you a match of singles and you're just sitting at home, softly thinking everything is over? He knows your name. Do you know God knows your name? If a bird was flying, God knows. Yeah, that's a sparrow going, you know. God knows. Or start drops, God knows. Drops of water, God knows. God created you because he loves you. And he's just waiting for you to run into his arms. He knows your name. He has called you um, by his name, you know. And that's why the last um, um, sermon for today, and this is where I round up, Psalm 55, verse 22, it says, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain you. God will never suffer the righteous to be moved. For as for me, I will call upon God. And the Lord will save cry aloud he will hear my voice God can hear your voice if you would only open up your heart and say God help me that's all I'm asking you to say God I'm crying out cry out to God and tell him father help me Lord Jesus come into my situation say Lord Jesus come into my home help my husband Help my wife, help my sick child, help me on my job, cause me to find favor. May the Lord bless you and keep you. God bless you and hope to see you soon. Amen.